Hey folks, welcome to Between Awesome and Disaster. This is your host, Will Carey. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate the, uh, your support week uh, to week. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Uh, I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm currently in uh, New York City. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, I landed back from a weekend in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida with my fiance. Uh, we were visiting her 94-year-old grandmother and um, we had a, it was a really good weekend. We, uh, I dr you know, I drove, uh, drove around the West Palm, uh, Palm Beach area and we, we had good meals at good restaurants. We, we, we went out to the beach to the end of the pier and listened to the waves crash and, and went to a turtle sanctuary and saw, um, turtles that have been injured uh, that are currently being rehabilitated so they can be released back into the wild. Uh, it's only, only my second time ever in Florida and I really enjoyed, um, enjoyed that weekend there, you know got to go swimming in the ocean which is something I always like uh, I always like to be able to do um, basically leaning more towards uh, the awesome side of uh, between awesome and disaster uh, and now I'm back in New York and I'm currently in the midst of a bomb cyclone um, which from my very limited meteorology meteorological see I can't even say the word understanding uh, is the uh, is when hot air, cold air, two fronts clash, creates a typhoon-esque kind of situation. So uh, I just got back uh, home from my, my office and am drenched. And uh, <laughs> and I'm hoping uh, that this doesn't uh, deter my, my, my guest for this uh, this evening. Uh, my guest on the show, uh, who, who, who uh, he had, he's not here yet, but he, he'll be here shortly, is... Uh, friend of mine from new the new york comedy scene comedian miles hewitt i've uh, known miles for a few years and uh he is i feel like maybe one of two people that i i know is originally from hawaii because he talks uh, he talks about it in his stand-up and uh he's uh, like like a lot of people that i have on this podcast uh somebody who i know but don't really know so uh, I know we've had good conversations, and he has a, uh, a quarterly show at the Knitting Factory. You can uh, call it Comedy Quarterly. You can get on uh, the mailing list uh, to know when the next show date will be. Uh, he It's done, uh, I believe, every season, so spring, summer, winter, and fall. And he co-produces that with a friend of the show, Sam Z, who you've heard before. So um, I'm going to sit down and have a chat with uh, my buddy Miles, and uh, we'll see uh, where this goes. Uh and uh, before we get into the episode today, a couple little bits of uh, uh, housekeeping. I am trying to uh, get as many positive reviews and uh, and ratings on Apple Podcasts and on on Stitcher. I'm trying to get folks to add the show to uh, their favorite playlist. So if you want to know each week when uh, episodes come out every Monday, but if you want to get notified when new episodes are released, you can do that on either of those platforms. We are also on Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts. And also want to let you guys know, uh, I recently joined the Stitcher affiliate program. So if you'd been thinking of signing up for Stitcher Premium, which uh, is, a, in all honesty, I think a really great value if you love uh, not just comedy albums, because you get a lot of comedy albums listening to on Stitcher Premium, but also if you're a fan of podcasts and want access to archives, get rid of ads, I think it's a pretty good deal, but and you can get an even better deal by getting a month uh, free with the promo code AWESOME. And uh, if you go to stitcher.com slash premium, you can put in the code AWESOME and get a free month when you sign up. So uh, if you guys wanted to check that out, uh, that's another way you can help support the show. And um, let's, uh, let's, get in, let's get into this today, and uh, I'll talk to you at the end. Let's go to my chat with comedian Miles Hewitt. I, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, every time I do things like after work, it, I'm always a little bit like out of it at first. Oh yeah. I'll get, I'll get going. Oh yeah. You, you're all, mm. you're all good, man. It is, it is, I feel a, I, I feel like it, it, it's, it's more understood now, uh, now that I think the entertainment business is becoming more niche and yeah. that 
there's a greater understanding that a lot of the creative people making creative things are ex- just fucking exhausted yeah, <laughs> all, like the all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the t- I'm, all the time. I'm like always tired. It's uh, and just like the whole thing of like keeping your your brain like having a job, you know, is shitty, and then having a job that you don't care about really, but like you have to do it because you need money, and then sure having to like switch from that to go like i have to go to i go to rehearsals most weeks it seems like straight from right. work and like having to come in there being like okay cool now we all have to really care about this whole other thing that has nothing to do with work like that we're not getting paid to do yeah ex- like, exactly it just takes a little bit to yeah and you'd have to own. compartmentalize your mind like three different ways yeah. it's yeah it, it's not it's, it's yeah it's it's not how i i i I don't know about you, but I did not start comedy to, to work. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> that was the, to, to me, like a career in show business was like the absence of work. Yeah. Like it was just fun, fun constantly. Right. And then just... it's, it's evolved. You, you learn, obviously that's not, not the case, yeah. but you basically have to become a small business owner with no formal education right. in, and, and uh, being a small business owner and, uh, and a PR consultant and a graphic designer and, uh, and, you know, uh, and, a marketing, uh, oh, God, expert yeah, marketing. Ugh. Yeah, and then and then after all of that, you have to you also have to be funny, right? Yeah, at, and you have to the, like get the on stage, yeah, and not just yell at people. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. Um, so, how long have you been in New York now? Uh, I've been in New York. Let's see, I moved here in two thousand eleven. Uh, mm-hmm. So what's that? Eight years? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just past. It would have been September two thousand eleven. Ah, nice. Yeah, I yeah. I've been. A little, a little bit longer. I moved here in June of 2010. Okay. So just coming up on on 10 years. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> at, at this point, yeah. But I don't feel. I feel like I didn't meet you until like two years ago. Yeah, maybe that. I could feel like be. we've just I'm, continuously missed each yeah, other. Yeah, I'm also like the absolute worst about like remembering people or like you know following up with people or like and being friendly to people. Not being friendly to people. I'm always friendly to people. I sure. Think. But you know, just like. I l- honestly do not remember like if I've met most people and it's just, mm-hmm. like, I always feel like such a dick. Uh, cause half the time I introduce myself to somebody, they're like, yeah, no, we've met. And I'm just like, uh-huh. oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. I, and some people might get offended by that, but I totally get it. There, yeah. uh, there's 8 million people in yeah. New York. You, Although you are, you are taller than most people. So I feel uh, like that, I, that is, I, that is true. I do feel like I haven't re- introduced myself to you more than once. Maybe I have. I mean, people tend to forget that I am. People tend to forget I'm tall, uh, and then they're just like, uh, "Oh, I forgot how tall you are." Yeah. Or my favorite is when uh, people first meet me when I'm sitting down, and then I stand up, and they're just like, "Oh my god, oh, there's so much more of you." Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so let's. Let, I want to. I want to trace this. Uh, trace yeah, yeah. your 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 your. Cur- your your hero's journey to, oh, God. to yeah, I actually, New York New York City. I actually meant to ask you because I obviously did my due diligence and went back and listened to some episodes just to like get a feel of what the oh, podcast thanks, man. is. Yeah, of course, it's you fantastic. Didn't have to do that. No, I oh. really enjoyed it. Appreciate uh, it. But it did make me wonder why do you want to talk to me? Because why do I want to talk I to seem you? Like a less caliber guest than you usually because get. You get some great guests in here. Thank you, man. I I appreciate that because because you are a comedian. Yes. And as a and and as a com- and uh, as being a comedian myself, mm-hmm. I feel that we are brothers in this thing. Oh, well. And I like to. I also use this like, and, and I know that podcasts are kind of becoming. A, there's a, they're a punchline now mm-hmm. to lots of other comics, especially. Yeah. But I genuinely do like feel that for for me at least, it is this is my way of getting to know people that I know right. because because I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you relate to this. I, for the longest time, I thought, oh, I have lots of friends. I have lots of friends. Right. And then somewhere along the way, I realized, oh, do I? Yeah. Or yeah, do I yeah. just know a lot of yeah. the names of lots of comedians? That's... And then, because you really only know right. someone from their act. Yeah. No, that's very true. That's, uh, I totally agree with that 100%. I've definitely also been like, uh, it's usually in the context of being like, Telling my wife, like, hey, we're going out somewhere. It's like, cool, where are we going? Oh, it's, you know, this guy's birthday. And she'll be like, who? And I'm like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. this guy. We did, uh, you know, we did this one show together <laughs> like a year ago at a bar. You weren't there. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I, I I have that conversation yeah. that that conversation a lot too. Which yeah. episodes did you listen to? Just out of curiosity, uh, your last two or three. I heard. Uh, let's see, here we go. The names. Um, if there are recent that, ones, I yeah. I have a feeling of of who those might be. Those were really, those were really fun uh, conversations. Right now, and and and. And the other thing I think is, you know, who knows, something super crazy might come up in this conversation that I would have never have planned for. And that's always fun. Yeah, no, I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. So that that's exciting. Now, I, I know a little bit about now talking about the little bit about your origin story that I do know because yes. I've seen your act. Yes. Um, you come from Hawaii. I do. I uh, was born and raised in Hawaii. I'm from the Big Island uh-huh. uh, District of Puna in a, a town called Pahoa. But I'm actually from Kapoho, which is about eight miles further out from Pahoa. There's nothing there. Mm-hmm. Even when I lived there, there was nothing there, but a, a lighthouse and like a couple houses and, and then a bunch of vacation rentals. And there was a town there in the 50s mm-hmm. uh, that was destroyed by a volcano. Uh, right. And so the land was really cheap. My parents and, and a bunch of other weirdos came in, bought 10 acre plots of land. And uh, last year they were all destroyed by a volcano. Well, wow. how many years yeah. in between eruptions was that? Uh, so I think the eruption was 59 before. And so uh, what's that like 60, eh, about 60 years, a little shy of 60 years. Uh-huh. And, and years. do you think, and is it going to erupt again in another 60 or 70 years? I mean, the volcano is always erupting. Um, it's, I think, actually n- not erupting right now. When it stopped finally last year, uh, that was the first time it had stopped in like 30 years or something. Like it had been going continuously, mm-hmm. just popping up in different spots and starting new flows and right. occasionally wiping out of town. Yeah, but, so so it's not like, oh, it's just going like, like spraying lava yeah. into the sky, but it's always doing something. It's always doing something. That so, lava's always moving. So you, so you grow up in paradise with the specter of death and destruction hanging over you yeah i guess it doesn't feel it never felt really like that except every Uh now and then when like like when i was like five or six uh it was yeah like 91 uh there was the kalapana flow which kalapana was a town kind of further down the coast from me Mm -hmm. and uh it was a legit town there was a store there was a playground uh and that was totally wiped out and everybody was just like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Look at this. And, like, people would go watch and be sad and cry. And it was a really big deal that, like, a church got missed. And, right. Uh, and so then it just kind of happened again with, with this latest one just on a, a much bigger scale, I guess. Like, there was just more land being taken up. So Goodness gracious. Yeah. That's that's. But, that's like, an... now everything, I guess, is back to normal? I don't know. I haven't been back. Uh-huh. But it. I feel like, because after that Kalapana thing, like, whatever, I was six. But even I was just like, huh, well, that sucks. I can't go to that playground. But, right. like, then, you know, You weren't freaked out about it. It's just like, out. oh, yeah. man, my, my, my playground's on fire. Yeah, damn, my playground. It's it's very, you know, Hawaii has a very symbiotic relationship with the volcano. It's un, it's it's understood. Yeah, I would imagine know? so. The yeah. same, way, same way, like, when I when they interview like surfers that get bit by sharks, right. they understand. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I'm going where the sharks live. Yeah, you man. know, it's a, it's a like, it's yeah. a possibility. You, yeah. you live with They're it. Just being a shark, man. I was just being a yeah. shark. So that part of Hawaii is, mm-hmm. is that when, when people, when, when people from the mainland say, Oh, yeah. I'm going to Hawaii, how yeah. far away from where they are going typically so, did you live? Um, I live, well now, uh, they go to where I used to live to check out the new lava flow. <laughs> Ah, of <laughs> um, course, of course. Uh, so I'm from the Big Island, which is not the main island. The main island's Oahu, which is where Honolulu is. Mm-hmm. So if you're flying there, like the direct flight from JFK uh, goes to Honolulu. Oh, gotcha. And then from there, it's like another half hour, 45 minute flight from Honolulu to the Big Island. And then uh, you land in Hilo. And then it's about a 45 minute drive from there to where I live. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, one other thing I'm, I'm curious mm-hmm. about, and because I've seen... Gabriel Iglesias is uh, Aloha Fluffy. Yeah. Growing up in Hawaii, um, mm-hmm. because you're white, are you still considered a Howley? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely a fucking Howley. Definitely, definitely yeah. a fucking Howley. I, I, because uh, the idea I got from that bit was that it, it was just a, a word for like loud, loud tourists. But I guess that's yeah, just no, what they it's, call. it's a word for white people. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Is yeah. it is it considered derogatory or is it just? Um, I guess. I mean, it it certainly was derogatory when i was you know in high school 
but uh, oh, did uh, that get thrown at you a lot in high yeah, school? All the time. But oh, um, I see. N- you know, now I I don't really care. I don't like you know I'm mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. Uh, right. It's uh you know it is what it is. I I get it. <laughs> kind uh-huh. of like I uh like growing up out there and, and living somewhere where like white people aren't the majority. It's mm-hmm. you can either be like get really fucking weird and resentful about it or right. you can just kind of be like yeah no i kind of get it like <laughs> like mm-hmm. i shouldn't be living here my people shouldn't have come all the way over like what are we doing here i burn so easily like i have moles <laughs> all over my fucking body like i'm gonna yeah. die of skin cancer if i stay here uh-huh. like i get it man i wish i could go back to the mainland too <laughs> yeah so uh, and and what was your home life like uh, growing up there what did your folks do uh my dad's a high school teacher mm-hmm. um and my mom's, uh, she now runs a uh, spa, uh, Paradisimo Tropical Spa in Hilo, Hawaii. Check it out the next time you're on the Big Island. Uh, <laughs> she'll enjoy that. Um, Absolutely. But uh, I think when I was growing up, she uh, she worked for CPS at one point, Child Protective Services. Mm-hmm. She uh, she taught sex ed for health classes, and she she's done all kinds of stuff. She has a degree in uh, uh, aquaculture, mm-hmm. like, uh, growing shit in water. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So that's why they moved out there. Originally, she got like a job at like the university or something at some lab. My dad's just a stoner surfer who was like, hell yeah, bro. And he's like, yeah, cool. Yeah, sounds, awesome. sounds good. Oahu, so that, that's where the North Shore is. Nice. <laughs> so they moved out there. And uh, yeah, I was uh-huh. born on the North Shore, actually, right by the big fucking, you know, surf breaks. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And now were you like the like chill, like surfer kind of guy nah, growing up? No, not at all. No. I mean, I... I, I Nah. Wouldn't imagine you would be. Yeah, I'm. I'm very chill here, uh, but it's only by comparison to how stressed out everybody else is here. Uh-huh. I'm, I was growing up there. I hated living in Hawaii so much. Like, really? nothing to do if you don't want to surf. Like, sure. And I uh, just could not surf. I tried. I was bad at it. Uh-huh. I didn't want to get good at it. So, read a lot of books. Yeah, that you was know, that was your jam. A lot of books, watched a lot of TV. Once we uh-huh. got a satellite dish when I was like fourteen, I was fucking. That's yeah. it. And is is the vibe on Hawaii as as ch- chill as as I imagine it is? Or yeah, it's, like it I, is, but like uh, oh, don't don't get me started. It's it is, but it's very. It's like a veneer. It's like mm-hmm. uh, there's a I think the KGMB Channel Nine. Uh, like slogan was basically like news for you know it's another day in paradise you know welcome mm-hmm. to paradise everything's like oh boy it's another beautiful day here in paradise and then like you look just below the surface though and there's like people blowing themselves up in meth houses and there's people like getting stabbed and shot all over it's a regular place just like everywhere else like people are fucked up and so wow. it's just like got this added layer of like well but i mean the weather here is very nice right so it's very very chill and yeah it's, it's like like very chill styling it's like ah oh, gotta stab you yeah gotta, oh gotta man that sucks <laughs> yeah. oh i'm oh, getting shoots. stabbed <laughs> oh shoots them bro yeah uh, the, the the that's the other thing i learned from that special is you know i learned shit's uh roger that uh, that's the roger. Uh, roger that um <laughs> uh, my brother my brother texts me that i'll be like hey man i like oh uh, when he was out here for my wedding I was like I hey, get to the you know get to this place at this time and I'll see you there at Raja that <laughs> that's great yeah so so you were so you're uh the so you're like so you were not fitting in with yeah. the culture of where you, where you grew up so yeah. like who were your uh, okay I'm, I'm I'm seeing the alienation that starts early on so <laughs> like who were your what were your favorite uh, what were your books what were you watching when you were a kid uh, what were you reading let's see I um. Uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. again, hell yeah, I love Lord of the Rings. I read, uh, I think I finished Lord of the Rings when I was like eight or nine, like too young to be reading Lord of the Rings, like uh-huh. old enough to read The Hobbit, way too young to really understand Lord of the Rings. Right. But uh, yeah, I read the shit out of that. Um, I would base, I literally would read anything. You could, I've read so many John Grisham books. Uh huh. You know, oh yeah, my my mom loves those. Yeah, they're, I mean they're well they're well done. Yeah, there's a know, reason they're, that they're yeah, popular. Exactly, and especially when you're just like a kid reading shit. Like I just it's like this is great, this is fantastic. I can read this stuff. These people, the lawyers, this is, this is nuts. Yeah, the South. Um, <laughs> right. So so you're reading about so you're reading about a, an experience of America that is completely separate from your yeah. experience of America. Yeah, I mean it's still it is still America. It is still very all the we all we have all the same cultural touchstones. Uh, mm-hmm. 
you know, as just part of living in America, you have to, you know, stuff like um, when I was in a college class one time, they asked what our earliest political memory was. And I was like, oh, it's George Bush saying, read my lips. Uh And like, that's the kind of thing, like everybody knew about that in America, including Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, all the same movies. We had all the same stuff as uh, as people out here my favorite movie when i was a kid was the mighty ducks which ah it's great it's great it's movie such a good movie and it's very torturing when your favorite movie is the mighty ducks and you live in hawaii right <laughs> there are no hockey rinks anywhere nearby not a one nope. not a one i remember playing uh having like those street hockey uh sticks and like a ball but um where i where i lived had no asphalt roads uh, right within any walkable distance so it was just me and my brother on the balcony of our house just like mm-hmm. hitting a ball back and forth with hockey sticks right and you, you weren't there was you weren't breaking the gender barrier with field hockey at, no no when you're field in hockey school. oh my god no um and so so were you like were you like the so like when you were in high school were you like the were you like the loner kid like i because no. when i when i was in hi, when i was in high school i was like the loner quiet gamer kid freshman year yeah. until i discovered the the theater department and then became who I'd always been trying to be. Yeah. Um, so I did, was there a moment for you, um, early on where you found like a thing or a a passion or were you just kind of aimless? I was very like there, I definitely wasn't like a loner in high school. Honestly, I had friends like I, uh, I was really into the, the punk scene actually. There's, there is a, there is a punk scene in Hawaii. This is Um, why I want to talk to you. Yeah. Cause (laughs) Yeah, because that's that's sort of my language. Yeah, yeah. tell me tell me about so I, the punk uh, scene in Hawaii. Um, it was great. It was it was awesome. It was all high school kids, as far as I remember. Uh-huh. Um, and it was you know it was great. We'd hang out. We'd listen to CDs. Like uh, I, all my friends were in bands. I did mm-hmm. not have the patience to get good at playing an instrument, uh-huh. just like surfing. So I was just like hanging around, right. you know. Smoking weed, smoking sure. fucking Marlboro Reds or USA Reds, really. uh-huh. and uh, and you were going to shows. Yeah, yeah, uh, we'd go to shows, put on shows. There's a band shell in in Hilo, which is uh, you know like the big town on my side of the island, and I right. worked at a sports bar as a busboy and a dishwasher just down the street from it. So there would be shows, um, you know, most not every weekend, but most weekends there would be somebody just putting on a show there. And so I would come out mm-hmm. of the bar with a bunch of free, you know, my shift meal and sure. and roll up wearing my, my golf shirt, yeah. uh, you know, uniform, get in the pit, and uh-huh. get fucking trashed. It was awesome. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. And, and, and what, what style of, of punk are we talking about? Are we talking like, like hardcore so, punk, like your minor threat influence yeah, kind like, of stuff? Like, like definitely hardcore, uh, minor threat, uh, no effectsy sort of, uh-huh. not so much funny. Um, yeah. uh, the casualties, you remember the casualties? I do remember the casualties. Was, I, I saw them on I Warped always, Tour once. That's who I always think of when I think of the punk bands that I, you know, was mm-hmm. all my friends were in in high school. Yeah, um, a kind of like, a, you know, the, the very much the punk uniform yeah. from like the UK yeah. days. Yeah, lots the, of, the mohawk lots of and mohawks. The, a lot of shouty, shouty Yelling. vocals yeah, and buzz salt guitars. Saying. Yeah, oh, if you can understand what you're saying, you're a fucking pussy, bro. <laughs> uh, if your song's about having feelings, you're a fucking pussy, bro. Yeah, so it's um, all lots of like that, that you know, very, ma- male testosterone. Very aggro. Aggro know. part of punk. Yeah. Um, which is fucking exhausting. <laughs> it, Honestly, it really is. It it is. I like a lot of that stuff, but there is oh. some of it that I just think, oh, you guys just don't know how to play. Yeah, it's uh, just like guys, just, guys, just like hang out. Like we can all just be chill. Like it's fine. Yeah, we don't have to be making. Okay, no. I find that very. I find it inter interesting because some people might think oh well how do you how do you get an angry punk scene in a beautiful place like uh-huh. why to me you get an angry punk scene in Hawaii the same way you get like a death metal scene in Norway right because Norway is a, a great place to be that takes care of of, of human of, right. of their people but then there's like you're frustrated and and you, you're angry but you can't be angry at any right. but there's nothing logically to be angry right. at so it's just a start, beautiful day in paradise yeah <laughs> yeah so you just you just get mad you uh-huh. just want to yell and, and you know 
tell tell people to fuck off and you know knock over street signs and oh yeah and especially that like that more like skate punk no effects kind of sound yeah. that's that's good music for good weather yeah like, oh yeah like i get i get very into like the seasons of music like mm-hmm. scott listening to scott in the winter oh you can't it, listen to scott it, in the winter. it doesn't feel it's right not allowed nothing um, with trumpets <laughs> yeah the metal's so cold Oh yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. And then, like my favorite uh, bands are like I describe them as like fall kind of yep. bands. Like, uh, yeah. like, uh, have you ever heard of uh, a band called the Menzingers? I don't believe I have. Although you did mention them on one of your recent episodes of this podcast that yeah. I listened to as research. Yes, because I did do a podcast about the Menzingers oh. uh, that the band liked. Oh, uh, nice. So, uh, so they're a, I, I they're a. a they're described as a, a punk band. They're from mm. they're from originally from Scranton. They're in Philadelphia now. Mm. Uh, I describe them as punk for people who have been more beat up by life a, a little bit. Oh, nice! Like if, if oh hell, that's me. Like if Bruce Springsteen was going to start a, a punk band, okay, I, he would start this. Band. All right, nice. Yeah, if you if you know if you remember the band the Gaslight Anthem, yes, uh, they since the Gaslight Anthem have gone away, mm-hmm. Menzingers are filling that hole in, okay. in my heart. I really enjoy their stuff. Right, I'll, nice. I'll play some of, some of it for you after we, yeah. after the interview, uh-huh. we're, we're done here. So, cool. so that's cool. So, so punk was kind of, you kind of grabbed onto when you were yeah. in high school Yeah. and was, if you weren't going to, if, did you think you were going to be involved in music in some way, even if you weren't going to no. play in a band? No, I don't what think I really the, did. Yeah? Honestly, no, I, uh, I think I, I don't even remember what I really thought. I don't know if I've blocked it out or if I've just, you know, had a bunch of done too many drugs. <laughs> but, uh-huh. um, I, I definitely thought I was going to get into film because uh, I would, you know, I would always, again, uh, all my friends also skateboarded. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to take the time to get good at skateboarding, so I would just film them. Skate got, videos. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta have that one kid who can't skate who just holds the camera. Yeah. So I would do that. So I was making skate videos like a lot cool uh, especially as i got closer to graduating so i thought i was going to go to like film school but i was also you know there was no film program or like thing in my school to like you know build a portfolio with so i kind of was just like i was you know i was always good at taking tests so i just took a lot of tests and sats and acts and got really good at those so i got Mm -hmm. into like a good uh, school which had a good film program Mm -hmm. and where'd you go to school uh boston university ah so you you went straight from maybe some of the nicest weather yes. in the world. Yes. To, to, Boston. to the second, Boston. The second nicest weather in the world. Of course. Oh, yes. It's fantastic. Yeah. I've spent many a quality to, yeah. to, in, in all honesty, I do. I, I spend time in Boston and I do love it there. Yeah. I um, love it. Yeah. There's uh, really great food in the North end. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I just, I knew I wanted to go to, uh, the East coast and, uh, I got into NYU, I got into BU, and even I was like, going from this to New York is probably a bad idea. Right. So I'm going to go to Boston. Which right, is need like that little bit of a little starter bit. city. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 can, I can relate to that. Yeah. I went to a, I went to Towson University, which is in the suburbs of Baltimore. Okay. So I, which by comparison where I grew up, is a I was like I can walk to a Barnes and Noble. Oh my god! I know being able to walk anywhere is I fantastic. I can call I can call delivery and they'll actually and come they'll to come. my house. Oh, delivery! Yeah, oh, it, yeah. No, it, I, that so that was the kind of shit that was blowing yeah, my mind. No. And I had to work up to like being able to feel comfortable like walking around in Baltimore City. Right. Um. But, but so yeah, I completely relate yeah, to no. building up to that. Okay. So and so so you're you're in you're in Bo- you're in Boston. Yeah. Uh, you're you're going to, you're going to college. What are you studying? Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, got into the college of arts and sciences. So I declared myself a history major, uh, mm-hmm. very quickly for some reason. I don't remember my reasoning there. Uh, but I do really love history. So I figured what the hell I'll uh-huh. be a history major and then I'll transfer to the film school. Uh, you know, once I've, once I'm able to, mm-hmm. and, uh, it turns out you can't do that. Um, oh, that as sucks. I discovered and uh, and I tried a lot to, to do it and I got yelled at by the school at one point they'd be like no you can't be a film major you fucking dipshit and I was like fine but I'll show you someday right. I'm gonna be a production accountant oh um, <laughs> that's the kind of conversation that I would have I would have with my dad what I would have had with my dad but yeah. you're having it with your institution yeah why wouldn't they let you change majors i don't even remember honestly uh, i think i i needed like 
a 3.8 and I had a 3.5 and I didn't have the requisite credits. But then I went and I took like film classes and got credits. But then they're mm-hmm. like, ah, but you still, your GPA is not quite there. And I was like, fine, whatever, fuck you. Uh, but please let me do it. And uh, I also got in, I was, I was, uh, I, I was fucking wild uh, when I went to college because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm 6,000 miles away from home. I have no supervision except like my mom's, uh, you know, aging, lesbian, recovering, heroin addict. She lives in Austin with all the college kids all around her who would like mm-hmm. be like, hey, yeah, no, Miles is alive. He's definitely alive. And then uh, I would go, you know, I was uh, did a lot of hallucinogens and I got – uh-huh. Uh, arrested at one point while tripping on mushrooms. I got kicked out of housing for that. I got uh, what? What's that story? That's a good story. I don't know how long we have, but oh, uh, we got time. Uh, okay, so it's uh, okay. And don't feel like uh, don't feel obligated. No, no, it's that. a good story. Okay, um, okay. Let me set the scene here. Okay, okay. <clears throat> it's Easter Sunday. Great start. Uh, my friend and I decided that we're going to do a bunch of mushrooms. Uh, there's like maybe seven or eight of us and so we're all we all eat uh you know we all eat an eighth of shrooms um except then i'm like hey i'll just take some more of these so Mm -hmm. i uh i had roughly a quarter ounce of mushrooms um which is too many mushrooms for the, for those of you that don't know. It's just too many mushrooms. Yeah, it sound, sounds like a lot. I've only done them once, but that sounds like it might be too much. It's a lot of mushrooms. Um, so then, you know, we're, we're wandering around. We're having a lovely time. We're, you know, we're a bunch of 18, 19-year-olds mm-hmm. tripping on shrooms. And uh, I believe we ended up going to Newbury Street in, mm-hmm. in Boston. Yep. And uh, we all, you know, we, were, we lived by Kenmore Square, mm-hmm. um, so near Fenway. And I have very vivid memory of like walking through Kenmore and I swear I could hear the crowd at Fenway just like, ah. uh-huh. I was like this is amazing. Oh man, I'm living my life. This is great. Yeah. We go to Newbury street and I'm just, you know, I'm fucking frolicking. I'm, I'm legitimately frolicking. Like, like tra la 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 Like tra la 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 la. Like if, if there was like a bouncing <laughs> ball that was just bouncing around whatever I was saying. Sure. I was like, just sing along everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and then uh, things started to take a turn, as they always do on mushrooms. Indeed. Which is why I say do acid. Don't do mushrooms. Do acid. Mushrooms are poisoning you. Acid is designed to get you high. Anyway, uh, we went into like a sex shop or something on Newbury mm-hmm. Street. Yep. And uh, uh, those, if you've you know, had a, a bad trip, you know, sexuality when you're having a bad trip is the worst. Right. Cause it's all very threatening. Oh, your body is so gross. Human bodies are so gross, especially if you think about it. Yeah. If you really do. And if you think about your own, it's just mm-hmm. like, Oh yeah. So, uh, it gets a little fuzzy from there, but needless to say, I was asked to leave the sex shop. Uh, so then I'm sitting outside smoking a cigarette and I know that I thought I was on Solano Avenue in, uh, uh, Berkeley, California, mm-hmm. which is where my uncle lived. And it was exactly, I just like, I knew exactly where I was. I knew how to get back to his house. Uh-huh. I'm like, I'm going to go to my uncle's house and everyone else. Also, everyone else is on mushrooms. Sure. So they're just like, cool, man. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do your journey, dude. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you go to your uncle's house. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> do you know, your journey. it's getting, it's getting pretty, it's getting pretty intense over here, man. So I think I'm going to head up Solano. I'm going to go, I'm going to go heat up my uncle Pete. And they're like, yeah, do it, man. Uh, so then I just kind of wandered off and there's a bit of a gap here in my, in my memory. Sure. But, um, it picks back up and I'm, uh, I'm sitting in a room where this, uh, very, uh, scared looking, uh, Indian gentleman about my age is, uh, is just asking me who I am saying, who are you? What are you doing here? Get out of my room. Uh, <laughs> to which of course I'm, I'm responding as, as I think we, I don't think I can be faulted for responding this. Um, who are you? What are you doing? Get out of my room. <laughs> and just repeating whatever he said. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what I found out later was that I had gone back to my dorm uh, and taken the elevator, but pressed the wrong button. So I was the floor above my floor in the corresponding <laughs> room, which I had just wandered into. Didn't even knock. Why would I knock? It's my room. Of course. Uh, and I have bad history with, with doors and hallucinogens. If we have time, I'll tell you another one. But uh, 
finally, uh, this poor kid has like, there's like a crowd assembling now. Sure. I'm just like, who the fuck is this guy? And like some of them I think might have known me, but this was not apparently a floor that I frequented often. Right, right. Uh, and then uh, my friend shows up who's who was like supposed to be the one who was babysitting mm-hmm. us, but so yeah, he, yeah. he just took like, you know, slightly less mushrooms. Of course. Uh, he's like, Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, it's Miles. Hey, uh, guys, don't worry. It's just Miles. It's it's Miles. I was like, okay, all right. And uh, this one guy is very much like, well, he can't just go into people's rooms. And he's like, it's okay, man. He's just he's just stripping his fucking face off right now. <laughs> I'll take him back downstairs. He's in the room. It's a whole thing. He thinks he's in his room. I'll get I'll get him out of here. And the guy's like, well, no, no, I'm I'm the RA, so uh, uh, no, you can't do that. I'm gonna call the police. Uh, so uh, then uh, things took a turn and. Next thing I remember, I'm lying face down on my bed in my room in the dark, watching the digital numbers on my my digital clock just swim. Right. You know, they're just doing the classic swimmy thing. Just yeah. rearranging themselves. And it, pretty great. Also, I should, I just want to make sure I, I make this clear. Hallucinogens are great. Everybody should do them. <laughs> anyway. Uh, don't let, don't let your experience yeah, no, this, dissuade uh, you. Someday you too can be on a podcast. <laughs> uh, the uh, cops show up. Uh, they ask me for my, you know, my ID, which I uh, dutifully took out of my wallet and presented to them, except that I thought that I had just made it appear in my hand. So I I was like, holy shit, that was crazy. I, can, I just made my ID appear in my hand. I'm going to make it disappear. And I just <laughs> waved my hand and just dropped it. And the, the, the way my friend acted it out later, will never, it never fails to, to not kill me. But the, right. co- the cop just looks at me and... <laughs> looks down at the ID and just bends down, picks it up and just hands it back to me. And they all just watch me as I do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, they start asking me all these questions, you know, like, uh, you know, what are you on? And, and I'm telling them, you're like, Oh man, I took like six hits of ecstasy. I drank a fifth of Jack Daniels. I smoked so much weed. I had, an, I had like an eighth. No, I had two eighths of mushrooms. Uh, and they're like, okay, when did you do all this? And I'm just like, ah, 1945. <laughs> 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 so they're like, okay, uh, well, that's probably not true, but we can't just let you have all this shit in your system. We got to pump your stomach. Uh, and my friend's like, no, 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 he's, he's full of shit, man. He doesn't know what he's saying. And they're like, no, we can't just be like, oh, okay, you're tripping. No. So uh, they strapped me to a gurney. Uh, Cause I didn't want to get on the gurney. So I had to be oh, strapped. Yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. nutshell. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and so I'm wheeled out and it was like a, an event at this point because word had spread. So there's all these people right. outside of the just... dorm. And I was just like, Oh shit, it's Miles. Oh, that kid from Hawaii. Oh yeah. It's the kid who like hadn't seen snow. And he was out here before making a big deal out of that. Right. Uh, and I'm strapped down. I'm just like, goodbye, everybody. I'm leaving forever. Bye. And I'm like <laughs> high-fiving people with my hands like strapped down. <laughs> <laughs> and they put me in the ambulance, and uh, the paramedic looked like Barry uh, Barry Pepper, who uh, uh-huh. like that that big Scientologist who was um, the sniper in Saving Private Ryan. Right. I just always think of that because I was like, "Holy shit, dude, you're Barry Pepper." <laughs> 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 Which he was like, "Yeah, okay, I'm Barry fucking Pepper." Because <laughs> it's also all these like you know bored Boston cops. Of course. Uh, and so the paramedics take me to St. Elizabeth's and they gave me charcoal sulfate. And the story gets a little less fun now, but uh, charcoal sulfate uh, coats the inside of your stomach and stops you from tripping like instantly. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So I went from being like, oh, this is crazy, man. Everybody's one and there's a whole universe just beyond our comprehension and we're all connected. And holy fucking shit. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the fuck is this? I'm in a hospital. I have needles in my arm. Like, yeah, I guess I immediately. Take off the heart monitor thing, pull the thing out. So I flatline on the monitor. So right. then the crash cart comes in, and they're just like, no, oh, it's this fucking kid. No, <laughs> yeah. All right, hook him back up. My friend finally manages to get in to see me, and it's uh-huh. just like, hey, man. I'm just like, dude, I'm going to lose my scholarship. I'm going to have to call my parents. I'm going to, oh, man, I fucking blew it. I got out, and I'm going to have to go back. Like, this is going to be a nightmare. And he's like, I know, I know. It sucks. It sucks. It's it's, it's, it's not important who accidentally told what RA. It's it's, it's fine. Uh, and then I piss tested, uh, which was an awkward experience because mm-hmm. they hadn't fully unstrapped me. Uh, and, um, yeah, basically, I finally get released, and... 
uh, I have a cigarette and I hadn't mm-hmm. eaten anything all day except a, a quarter ounce of mushrooms. Of course. So, uh, I got lightheaded waiting for the cab. I go back inside and in the lobby of the ER at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, I fainted. Oh. <laughs> so, and so you had to be readmitted. It was a, it was a, it was a very cinematic moment as I remember it of just kind of coming to looking up at all these faces, looking down at me and me just being like, Oh yeah, this, that happens. Sometimes my blood sugar is pretty low. I got to go. I just got to go home. And there's like, no, you're not going home. You just fainted. Like, no, you're staying overnight. So back to the house, back up to <laughs> right. Uh, the next day is marathon Monday. So there's uh-huh. no tea service. I'm in Brighton. I have n- I've never been to Brighton before at this point because right, right. I've only been in school for a few months. Uh, and so I had to make my way back to uh, to my dorm, and uh, yeah, I had to call my parents and tell them uh, tell them the good news. And it, it all worked out in the end. I did get kicked out of housing. I did lose my scholarship, but got a grant. Ah, uh, so you just moved categories, basically. Yeah, basically. And and what what, what was it about hallucin- the mm-hmm. the drugs that uh, was so compelling to you when you get to the Northeast? Were you oh. just like I mean, uh, I want. Were you on Rumspringa, basically? Uh, kind of. That was probably part of it. And like you know, um, I found out later uh, when I went home that all my friends also uh, at the same time had gotten really into hallucinogens, actually, hmm. uh, which is fascinating to me. We were all on the same. You you're know, on the same trajectory i guess yeah, were you trying know. to like were you using them for your the mind expanding qualities or were you just yeah, trying getting, to feel something yeah, different just getting silly just you know uh-huh. it, it wasn't too uh the mind expanding qualities were a happy side effect yeah um, yeah it it, it kind of it this all kind this all makes sense to me because when you say you were wanting to be a filmmaker and then mm-hmm. Think about history. History is essentially just a form of storytelling, the same oh, way film is a form of yes. storytelling. I don't know if you see on that shelf, I have a model of the Titanic. Oh. That's like one of my favorite things to read about. Oh, wow, the RMS Titanic. Because yeah. uh, I'm a super nerd. Um, fun, uh, my dad got that for me when I was a little kid. It yeah. it sinks. <laughs> it, it, it'll it break in half and sink if you put it in water. That's awesome. Which, uh, you know, I hope in, you know, I hope in 100 years there aren't World Trade Center toys. Oh, God. But that would that'd be that would be. <laughs> fucked up uh you know i'm hoping to get canceled on this episode um, <laughs> don't worry I'm, I'm sure i'm helping um so okay so so after this are do you yeah. are you able to get back like on so on the right on uh, on, on some kind of path on the righteous path uh yeah i guess i mean i uh well i don't know and then i just you know spent a lot of time doing blow and hanging out mm-hmm. and uh you know since i couldn't go home for for most holidays and like uh, sure. summer I would like go hang out at my friends' houses for holidays and stuff, which was actually awesome because I now like have a ton of people that I consider friends that I didn't meet in college that were just like friends of my friends that were in college, which I think is kind of cool. And most of my other college friends kind of missed out on that aspect of, of getting, getting out of your, you know, your life and starting your own life. And part of it is like making friends with people you never would have met. So like, yeah, I think so. Um, so that was cool, and uh, eventually I, I straightened myself out. I, you know, got uh, got really into electronic music uh, for oh, a yeah? while at one point. Yeah. Oh, like uh, cool. like like what kind of like kind of stuff like, like house? Or? Uh, like house. Well, this. So by now it's like two thousand, you know, ten, and uh, and UK garage and dubstep was really coming up. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, before fucking Skrillex ruined. Sure, before Americans, Skrillex kind of made it a punchline. Americans line. destroyed dubstep, but old, like actual dub combined with two step and garage. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Scream, Banga, they're the best. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, w- w- what, and were you like going to like, d- like, yeah, you're like so, dancing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh, nice. I was a dancing fool. I, yeah. I was going, I was coming down to New York actually a lot, uh, and I'd go to like, you know, dark room uh, at coco 66 in greenpoint that uh-huh. was the thing uh there were all these places on north 6th street um the cove and uh this place across the street from it that i don't remember the name of and occasionally oh public assembly i one time smoked uh, dmt in the green room at public assembly because uh-huh. i just wandered in and nobody stopped me and i was there with like the dj and i was like hey man you want to smoke some dmt with me and he was just like no no, who are you? <laughs> what is what is that like? I've because that's pretty chill. that's one of those. Uh, that's something I've heard like you know Joe Rogan talk about yeah, constantly. Yeah, I know it's and very always with him. And I've because the way he describes it is that you 
like do you see things that aren't there i guess you do you see, like kind of, it's it's geometric uh shapes mostly for me you know mm-hmm. you'll see like like this uh thing you got going on on your wall over here oh the the triangles on the wall yeah, yeah. um you see like that but like everywhere i don't know it's it's impossible to really explain it you, uh-huh. you basically die for 15 minutes but uh then you come back and then yeah. you're just kind of high we used to play dominoes and one person would uh be like on the couch uh, smoking dmt you know with headphones on just mm-hmm. tri- tripping out and then they'd kind of pop back up after 20 minutes and be like okay all right we're still playing dominoes okay let me get in there <laughs> uh yeah that's what it. i've heard you kind of like yeah. last for like 15 minutes yeah. but like it's fantastic now, and and how did that change like your perspective on on the way you viewed the world? Uh, well, I don't. I'm not like I don't know. I'm not sure really. I yeah. guess I'm. I guess uh, I'm sort of like I don't want to say I'm not afraid of my eventual death because I think we're all very afraid of our mm-hmm. eventual death, and that knowledge is kind of always there. But uh, it's probably going to be okay. Because uh, apparently you you really just trip balls right at the end there. That's what I hear. Yeah. Something else I think about is uh you know the experience of of time. Oh like, yeah. Oh my god. Time. Like the, that i that idea that uh like like the this idea that like you know the after maybe like the afterlife or 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 immortality that's really just the experience of your brain putting everything into to coping with the trauma of dying. And what is actually fit, maybe like five or 15 minutes is mm-hmm. actually like your experience of it. It is much longer. Right. That's a very interesting that's idea. Super to me. cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that shit. Um, and yeah, that's something I always used to get really, you know, tripped out about when I just be like, what is time? You know, like what time is it? Who knows what time it is? It could be any time. Time's made up. Somebody if, at some point was just like, okay, this is what time it is. And everyone was like, cool. Yeah. I mean, what's that guy get to decide? That that was my experience the first time I I got hot, I, I I smoked pot and I actually got high mostly mostly I would just get sleepy when yeah. I when I smoked but yeah. I, I went to this uh, apartment mic and everyone was hanging out afterwards and I took about nine really deep <laughs> rips of this vaporizer nice. and then the classic like everything became twirly. Oh yeah, yeah. And I did get back to the train, but I was walking with a complete stranger. It was the first time I ever had to go like, <laughs> I'm so fucked up, dude. <laughs> I don't know what is that, happening. That's me anytime I do anything, which is also that's the most ironic thing about it, is that for all of the times that I've that I've like done drugs, I'm so bad at it. Like, uh-huh. I always freak out. I always am like, oh, I'm so fucked up. Like, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I don't Once know. I got on the train, I was fine, but I was listening to like, uh, I was listening to Angels and Airwaves mm-hmm. and Daylight Savings Time hit, so time went back oh, an no. hour on the train. Oh, man. But once I was back in my apartment, I, I was the most relaxed I'd ever yeah. been. Hey. Um, nice. So how do we get from... I know. Um, how do we get from you being like a EDM, like, uh, you know. like dance kind mm-hmm. of like... You're half like, like dance rate. Like you're a ha- club kid. You're half a club kid, but yep. also you have this like Zen understanding of yep. like the world and consciousness. Yep. Ha- and I know all the words to most Dead Kennedy songs. Yeah, and you're and you're a punk, and you're and you're like a hardcore punk guy. <laughs> yeah. How do you? How do we get? How do? What are the steps that happen that end up with you being a comedian yeah. and and a accountant? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. It's crazy. If I knew the answer, um, I don't know. I uh, I started doing stand up when I moved to New York, and that was just because I think I just, you know, wanted to wanted to try something new. You know, mm-hmm. see, uh, have have people be forced to listen to me talk for a certain yeah. amount of time. And did you like stand up before that? You did stand yeah. up, or oh, yeah, of course. I I love stand up. Yeah, I um, when I was uh, when I was in high school, I was on the baseball team for a little while. Um my freshman year of high school, I was terrible at baseball, mm-hmm. like, obviously. Um, but I, uh, we were playing in a tournament on Kauai. Uh, and after we lost the, the first game, so we're knocked out immediately. Mm-hmm. But it was the only time I got a hit uh, that season. I got a double. I doubled off the wall uh-huh. uh, somehow. And afterwards, they were like, oh, uh, the whole team's going to the north side of the island. Uh, but thing is you have to have uh, a percentage of hawaiian blood to to come which is not an mm. uncommon thing in hawaii there's there's like kamehameha schools are only for people who sure have hawaiian uh, dna and also 
the island of Niihau, which is just north of Kauai, is off right. limits to everybody but Native Hawaiians. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it sounded like I was like, okay, yeah, no, I get it. I'll I'll hang out here in the I'll hang out with the other Howleys back at the hotel. Sure, sure. Uh, the other Howleys were just me, and uh-huh. so I'm by myself, and I just watched Comedy Central presents for the entire day, uh-huh. and it was hilarious. And then the whole ride back to the airport later that day, I was literally just reciting stand-up bits that I had just heard to people, and everybody was just loved it. And I was like, holy shit, this is fantastic! I'm mm-hmm. getting good attention. For, for just these, uh, you know, for these observations that somebody else made. This is uh-huh. great. I wish so, I could do this. So that kind of set the seed yeah. early on, and then you, you and s- then and then you started in New York. Yeah, so I started in New York, and uh, yeah, just started doing mics, and you know, uh, the rest is history. I, I honestly though, I haven't done stand up in a while. I'm like borderline considering stopping calling myself a comic and saying I'm a writer. Yeah, because I've been writing so much more. Well, well, then you also, well, you're also, are you? Because this is this will be a nice, interesting way to kind of segue into and, and yeah. come in for Elena here, mm-hmm. because n- now that I've I've heard uh, now that I know you a bit a bit better, it makes perfect sense that you would take on something like doing a sketch show <laughs> based on David Foster yeah. Wallace. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's who, very on brand for me. <laughs> yeah, it, that makes that makes total sense. So, but I, I mean comic is kind of like a big broader umbrella term yeah. i think there is i i say i will still say you're a, a comedian certainly yeah um and, you, and the thing is you never have to like stop you can like work on lots of people work on other things yeah. but they're still comics that's Th- true you, you know you know what i mean yeah you're right that's you know, yeah okay okay i'm sold yeah thanks. i think about a lot i think yeah. about this a lot a All lot right. of this stuff well, thanks uh, will you really times uh, yeah. uh so so because t- i think i think i think i might y- y- I might have been with you when you were working on the idea That's for right. for the David Foster Wallace sketch show. I remember show trying at, to explain the plot of Infinite Jest to you at Brandon Saloon. Right, because that that's one of those books. I'm not intimidated because it's long. I'm intimidated because I don't want to have that moment buying it at the store. Yeah. <laughs> Where the where the girl behind the counter is gonna give me yeah. the look of like oh, oh one of boy. these fuckers yeah one of these guys I did love the movie End of the Tour though so yeah I, I uh, haven't seen it <laughs> I know I should see it uh, acting's very the acting yeah. is very good I, uh, I'd be curious what you think of it as uh, someone yeah. who knows him um, so for the first show I uh, at the end I dressed up like David Foster Wallace and really I was just dressed up like Jason Siegel as David Foster sure, Wallace yeah. in that movie uh, from the production stills because I. Uh, and it was pretty creepy how much I looked like him, honestly, uh-huh. the bandana and glasses. But yeah, yeah um, so Sam, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, so yeah, Sam Bourne and I uh, just wanted to write a show together and we were dicking around and, and trying to come up with an idea for like a, a, a show structure. And I mm-hmm. was like, I don't even remember how we ended up on the subject of David Foster Wallace, but I was like, oh, have you ever read David Foster Wallace? Uh, all these footnotes and end notes and asides and it's like mm-hmm. really meta and like sometimes he'll just like spend like three pages of a footnote just like complaining about how he doesn't want to be writing the story at all <laughs> and then he'll come back and you're like right back in the in the in the story uh and sam was like no never read him and i was like okay so this is an idea this is a terrible idea we should definitely not do this idea uh, we should do a sketch show based on David Foster Wallace's writing style, not an actual story that mm-hmm. he wrote, but just like we should do something where we like stop and start and, you know, address the audience would we'll come out and just be like, hey, what's up? It's me, Miles. I wrote this sketch. It's based on this, like stuff like that. And uh-huh. uh, and so we did it and it, it, it worked. And uh, and then we did a second show and it, it also kind of worked. Uh, but now I think we've we've now done four this year and uh and we really each one has been fucking like it's really starting to get better and better and better oh that's uh, awesome yeah we've kind of like locked into how the show works we we chop up some sketches we run other sketches fully through uh eat between sketches there's slides that have lots of footnotes and, and notes and all that shit so i get uh-huh. to do that and uh and it drives me insane every show like the week before the show, I'm just working on the slides usually, and it's like honestly making me be like, oh, you know, I kind of get why David Foster Wallace killed himself. This yeah. is crazy. Just, Trying to just keep the all weight, this straight, yeah. weight of it. Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel when I watch when I watch Rick and Rick and Morty. Like I can mm-hmm. feel the weight of the writing on yeah. the people who had to think of the idea. Yeah, it um, gets. There's always one slide in every one of my shows where it's just like, also, 
This is stupid. This is a bad. This is bad. <laughs> is this, are you guys enjoying this? <laughs> is anybody enjoying this? But it is a good show. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, and you do those where? Uh, we're at the uh, at the pit loft. Um, we have we we just got uh, Sketchfest. Actually, I don't know when this comes out. Uh, uh, I was going to put it out not uh, not next week, but the week after. Uh, okay, we might be after Sketchfest. Sketchfest uh, the twenty sixth of October. So okay, well, I will make sure to plug your show before this comes out. Then awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, but then we we have our Sketchfest set uh, at the Pit Underground at five p.m. for Sketchfest on the twenty sixth, and then we have our regular show. It's our last show of twenty nineteen uh, at the Pit Loft at nine p.m. on November 9th which uh and it's gonna be a good one i'm i'm excited we just we just got the script down it's um a couple new ones some of the best uh like the best stuff that we've done all year we're, we're bringing back uh i wrote a, a pretty good twist ending and pat riley's got a got a really good he had a really good idea for how to how to end it um so i'm really excited to see how people react to it it's really cool we've got like people come back to it like we have people who have seen every one of the shows that's awesome, is, dude. Uh, which is super cool, and uh, yeah, I'm really into it. I'm I'm really happy with with it. It's very satisfying. That's great, uh, man. Yeah, and that's on the 26th because my group's Sketchfest shows on the 25th. Oh, nice. Uh, so so we're uh, yeah, I've got tech on 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 Tuesday. I'm the tech for oh. the for the group. Oh, nice. So um, I uh, we had our tech rehearsal yesterday. Um, afternoon i had to leave work for an hour and run run to the underground and and do tech there mm -hmm. and, and do you have a tech you work with every every week um, or every time i usually uh i usually try for john carlo do you know john carlo john carlo he's, yeah he I does think, like everything so. at the pit uh he's fantastic and it's really awesome to because we've had him for most of our shows and once your tech starts to get to know to, you know, to know the bits i yeah. i know exactly what you're yeah, talking about i'm very in sync with the guys i do a lot of stuff with yeah, so it's super helpful to have a tech that you can trust because then you can be like and we will have like because we've had a show where he you know wasn't doing tech and it was like who do we have doing tech oh okay well i guess we let's not let's not go crazy like let's try to keep things manageable here just because we don't if you don't know the guy mm -hmm. who's in charge of you know the, the cues it can fuck up a whole show i've seen shows where some where, where there was bad tech and it ruined multiple yeah. sketches oh yeah i had a, a show where the q lab software completely crapped out oh, God. at the beginning of the show oh. and i had to rebuild the show while the show oh, was happening fuck. that is my nightmare and the projector died during another show uh i i i do oh. tech for it was oh, oh. what I was trying oh. so hard it, it was brutal um so <laughs> what what are those days again because i'll i'll try to i'll, I'll get this out before um, then the sketch fest is uh, the 26th of October. Um, I'm actually out of town that weekend, <laughs> uh, but we found the, uh, cause also uh, me and, uh, and Hattie, Hattie Hayes, uh, mm -hmm. who is an actual expert on David Foster Wallace, by the way, oh, which cool. is a fun dynamic that's added to the show. Um, we're both out of town and we're both like the only two people in the group who actually care about anything David Foster Wallace related. Gotcha. So we, we found a, a good way to, to work around that. But, um, that's the 26th of October. And then our regular show is November 9th at the uh, pit loft at 7 PM. Excellent. Sounds good, man. Uh, stuff. Thank, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I really, man. I'm I really sorry appreciate I it. spent most of the time talking about my drug trip. <laughs> no, dude, that was, well, that's the kind of moment that I would have never been able yeah. to plan for. And that's the, uh, that's what I like to do. Why yeah. I like to do well, this show. Good. I hope people enjoyed it. I'm so uh, embarrassed for myself. Don't listen to this mom. <laughs> you already know the story. <laughs> Tell it every Christmas. Oh, I'm also funny. <laughs> I feel like I wasn't funny at all. At I, th I think, I think you were very yeah. funny. And, and also, the thing about podcasts is sometimes it's just about like the greater universe and the human experience. Oh man. shit, man. That's and what now I think. you're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's a four hour follow up episode to this <laughs> uh, somewhere <laughs> down the line. I know. It's just getting good. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, Miles. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Seriously. I really appreciate it. No problem, dude. <laughs> Okay, so real quick before uh, we end the show here, uh, Miles, uh, after he was leaving, he messaged me 
uh, that he wanted me to read um, this. So I'm going to read what he sent to me right now. Uh, occurred to me on the ride home that I probably should have stressed that I no longer do any drugs and am a very reliable and responsible person who is very fun to work with. And I agree with that completely. Uh, I've worked with Miles on a lot of different projects and I think he's a great dude and I really enjoyed this conversation I got to have with him so thank you Miles for your time and, and for your candor I really appreciate it uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in uh, that's the show for this week you can follow me on Twitter at comic will carry uh, you can follow the podcast at awesome depot if you want me to come do stand up in your city let's make it happen and uh, if you want to tell your friend about the show we're available everywhere you get your podcasts also want to give a shout out to my uh, supporter at the awesome producer level, Mary Beth Mooney, on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. I really do uh, appreciate it. And if you want to look at some of the ro rewards I have available, you can go to patreon.com slash awesome disaster. One of the rewards is I make custom mixes, and that is one of my uh, talents, is putting together an excellent collection of songs, any style of music based on uh, a specific goal or idea. Uh, or time in your life that you're looking for. And it's something I pride myself on and I enjoy doing. So check that out, patreon.com slash awesome disaster. Uh, hope you guys have a good week. Uh, I'm hoping the bomb cyclone uh, dissipates by at some point later this week. And uh, I appreciate you all being here. And I will see you next week between awesome and disaster. Take care, everybody. <laughs>